What's up guys? Uh, welcome to this week's video. We uh, got a few things to do today. We're going to get started doing. Uh, we mentioned, I think in our last video, uh, this coming up August, we're planning on going up to the Ozarks in Arkansas. And we're looking at doing at least day one and day two, possibly day three of the Ozark Overland Adventure Trail. Um, we're gonna attempt to do that, and then we got some other places that we've been before that we wanna go back to. Um, so we're kind of getting a few things wrapped up. We finally got the cooling system, I believe. Um, good to go on termite. We, I got out, yeah, Sunday. It was hot, and, and just, we were heating up right up when we'd get above 60 mile an hour, the temperature was kind of starting to climb. So we had had the radiator boiled out, new thermostat. We have flushed this thing, I don't know how many times. So I ended up dumping two bottles of flush in it and just running it for about a week, every single day, just running it. And then um, again, flushing the block, flushing everything out with water. Uh, we went back with a little less coolant this time. We were doing 50-50 before, I went down to like a, I don't know, 35, 65-ish type mixture, and um, added some water wetter from Redline, and things seem to be okay. We're running right at 205, never got any higher than 205. Uh, we got a 195 thermostat, and that was me running 65 with the air conditioner on, and looking at all the forms, most people's wagon ears, that's kind of what they say they're getting. So. Everything, I'm, I'm going to take it with that and say that we're we're good to go. So, because we're going up, one of the things that I wanted to get done is... Um, I want to get the winch on. So, I'm kind of out here today. I just got off work and I'm going to kind of start looking at how we're going to mount this thing. I, I want to keep the factory bumper. I know on the three-piece bumpers, I've seen a lot of people run winches maintaining the three-piece bumper i think they're a little bit uh thinner not quite as as tall as these are and and just from what i can tell that would make it a lot easier so i, I don't know how we're gonna do this quite yet um i had i'm gonna have to just get the bumper off and really kind of see what i'm working with i've got a rough game plan in mind but um we're gonna try to get the winch mounted up won't be finished this episode um Andrew's inside sick. The kids have been sick. Um, so we haven't really been going and doing much of anything. So, um, like I said, I just got off work. It's raining outside. So I said, you know, I'm going to get out here and, and get started on this thing. One of the things that I did do, guys, I'm going to come back to this maybe one day. But just because of time, I did mount our hitch back. I was going to build one that went up inside of the frame and connected inside of the frame and came out of the center of the bumper. And I was gonna do that to just try to alleviate this hanging down and kind of give us that little bit more ground clearance. But I, I just, I, 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 I'm limited on time here. And so it's like, which one would I rather do? Obviously getting the winch on the front is gonna be more beneficial and, and helpful. So I just took this thing and, and mounted it back up um, got it back on so we have a hitch back again now and more than likely that's what's always going to be there <laughs> so so anyway uh we're also getting close um i didn't write down but i'm just kind of figuring we're getting close to our 500 mile mark on the gears if if we haven't surpassed it already so here pretty soon we're going to be dropping the covers off and changing the gear oil at that 500 mile break in mark. No noises, no nothing like that. It's just a good thing to do because anytime you do new ring and pinion, you're gonna have some shavings in there. You're gonna have some metal from the gears meshing together and, and finding their place. And so you wanna just get all of that out and, and start fresh with some new after your break in oil. So we're getting pretty close to do that. Um, don't know if we'll film that. It's just pretty straight covered. Pop the covers off, kind of clean everything out, put the covers back on and fill it back up. So pretty straightforward there so anyway guys main thing i'm gonna try to do today i'm gonna get the bumper off and then we'll kind of start the process of talking through how we want to mount this thing Today's 
now. It's Wednesday. I uh, have been contemplating how to do this, how do I want to do this for the last few days. You know, laying in bed at two in the morning, laying there, building this stuff in your head. And, and the biggest issue as far as building the winch mount itself, that's going to be super, super simple. Um, I've kind of got that in my head. My biggest concern was mounting it to the, the frame mounts that are on these for the factory bumper. Um, as you can see, the metals, it's just kind of thin. And I didn't know, you know, do I want to beef that up? Do I want to make that a little bit stronger? I mean, we are still going to mount the factory bumper and it mounts out here. My winch mount is going to slide to the inside. I have thought about, I made me a little template here. I had thought about cutting me out. I have some quarter inch plate steel. Um, just cutting me out some, some inserts that would sit in here like this and well, put a 90 degree bend back here, weld it to the core, weld it across the bottom, up here and across the top, pop our holes through, and it would just kind of thicken this, this mount up a little bit. Um, but, you know, if you went and bought an aftermarket winch bumper that was pre-built, like at BJ's or somewhere like that, you're just gonna mount it to these mounts here anyway. Um, I watched an old bleeping Jeep video where Nate built a winch bumper for his J10, and he just mounted it straight to these, uh, these mounts here. So I don't know if I wanna beef them up or not. Um, the, I'm gonna have quarter inch plate coming off that will go through the bumper and our winch will mount to the front of the bumper. Um, I know I could build a winch bumper and do all of that stuff, but I really just wanna, I, I, from the very get go, I, I've just wanted to maintain uh, the factory bumper. I just, I don't know, the, these old Jeeps to me have, a, there's a nostalgia to them. There's just a look that I, I, I just really love. I've just, there's, there's old pictures and things that I looked where you'd see these with the old three-piece bumper and it would have a winch on the front. I, I don't know, it just, I just like that look. It's got a real nostalgic look to it. I'm not opposed to, again, I'm not opposed to winch bumpers. Um, they're just really expensive. And so the the plan that I have is is going to be a combination of welding, but really our, our, our strength is going to be in some in, in good, it's going to be bolted and, and mounted really firm. So, you know, I feel fairly confident about it. Um, so I don't know if I'm gonna do that or not. But anyway, so so this week's video, guys, is, I know it's mostly just me talking about this, um, but I finished up a job today. Andrew's feeling better, so we'll be, we're kind of getting back to normal life. And tomorrow, I will probably actually start working on this. And so next week's video will be us kind of getting this done. I got a winch plate ordered uh, from, um, rough stuff off road. Um, they built a nice looking quarter inch, uh, winch mount plate. So I got that order today. They had a July 4th weekend percentage off. So, uh, that's on the way. Um, so yeah, get all of that stuff in. In the meantime, while I'm waiting on the winch plate, I'm going to get my mounts that will come out of the frame rails and go through the bumper. I've got the uh, the bumperettes off. You can see here, I've, I've got them unbolted. So we'll probably just come right here to the inside of the uh, original bumper mount, which is somewhere in this vicinity. So we'll probably just come, whatever our measurement is, and we'll just do a nice slit that'll look a lot like this, but it'd just be bigger down through here. And that's what our, our, our winch mount was, just slide through there bolt to the frame and that way if we ever have to take the winch off we just unbolt from the inside we can slide the winch mount off and if this thing ever wants to go back and we don't want to have a winch on it we want to just go back to a factory look put our bumperettes back on there and it would cover the slit up and everything would be fine so so anyway that's kind of what we're looking at um so hopefully next week's video will be some building some fabrication on getting this winch stuff built um, but we're really just kind of shooting and gearing up for uh, August as we're getting ready to go to Arkansas for the, uh, Overland Adventure Trail. Uh, again, we're going to be doing days one through three. So 
we're just trying to get some things buttoned up like the winch and, and, and uh, you saw we got the hitch on and stuff like that. Um, I took a few degrees timing out of the ignition, uh, just like two or three degrees. It was a little, it wasn't so lean. It just, whenever the temperature would get up high, uh, it just, I don't know, I think the timing was just a little bit advanced. Um, because if you understand how vacuum advance works in a distributor, at my base timing, I was fine, but at full timing, going down the highway um, with our RPMs up high again, I think it was just advancing the timing just a little bit too much. So um, I backed a little bit of timing out and it does seem to run a, a good bit smoother. Uh, it just feels smoother to me now. So been doing stuff like that. Um, yeah, we'll get the winch on, get a few things done. I do want to do a video I don't know if it'll be next week or next week to kind of see how all this goes uh, with, with time and fabrication, but uh, I do want to do a video because, you know, when we go to the Ozarks, we're looking at at least seven to eight hours drive um, just to get there, just to get to the trailhead. And so, you know, if you drive a new Jeep or a 4Runner or a Tacoma or something like that, it's probably not a big deal for you. Um, as far as, you know, dependability of the vehicle, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it is, but not nearly as much as like it is for us with an old vehicle. Um, but we've done old trips like this in old vehicles plenty of times. I mean, we drove termite back from Panama city, which was right at six to seven hours, um, when it had a carburetor and it had a few other little issues and, and we, we showed up, bought it and drove it straight back home, you know, and it did fine. So there's just a few things that I have on my checklist, things that I look at. There's the way that we plan our trip, things like that, all to accommodate doing it in an older vehicle. So I want to kind of share some of that stuff in the upcoming video. Um, and I'd like to hear from you guys, things that, that you may uh, look at if you travel in an old vehicle for, for long distances and stuff. Because as dependable as Termite is around here, she runs all the time. I mean, it's our daily driver for the most part. Um, but that's different when you're seven, eight hours. And then, you know, next summer as we're planning on going out to Colorado, definitely things that you want to look at and, and things that you want to consider when traveling long distance in an old vehicle. But so, yeah, guys, thanks for watching this week. I know it's kind of une uneventful, but we just want to kind of give an update on where we are. And uh, hopefully by next week, we'll be making some major progress on getting the winch on this thing and um, and going from there. So, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Like, subscribe, comment below. We love hearing from you guys. Um, we love, you know, even though we haven't got to really meet anybody in person, we love just talking to people around the country, wherever you are. Um, Andrew does most of the social media stuff, so that's who you're talking to. So if you ask a technical question, uh, she, and it takes her a while to get back, it's because she has to come ask me what the, <laughs> that kind of stuff. So, so uh, that's usually when things are commented back, it's usually Andrea. So um she's the one who does all the social media stuff so uh, we're on instagram find us there follow us there if you haven't already and and uh yeah so anyway guys we'll see you next week have a good one